Yakov Pavlovich and his wife lived together for a considerable amount of time in a humble apartment consisting of a single room that was located within a typical Khrushchevsk building in Russia, on the other hand, Yakov Pavlovich found himself in a state of complete isolation after the passing of his wife after 30 years of marriage, the reality of his seclusion was clear. Despite the fact that he did have family at his disposal, most notably his daughter, who came to visit him on a regular basis to help him with duties around the house, in spite of the fact that other members of his family could provide him with support, Yakov Pavlovich constantly struggled with feelings of isolation and the difficulty of organizing his time, particularly during the winter months. In spite of this, he found comfort in routine activities, particularly tending to his home alongside his younger housemates. He tried to avoid engaging in prolonged conversation with neighbors or indulging in gossip with the elderly ladies at the entry, a practice that he had avoided even during the lifespan of his wife, instead, Yakov Pavlovich found satisfaction in a treasured activity, which consisted of sitting on his little balcony, which was outfitted with a comfy seat and shelves that were loaded with a variety of goods. He also installed a variety of bird feeders, not only spreading bread crumbs but also securing them on homemade platforms for the tits, in addition to these supplies, he installed these feeders, this kind act attracted a wide variety of birds, which allowed them to survive the cold winter by providing them with food. In the course of one day, Yakov Pavlovich saw something strange on his balcony, a bowl of food that had been flipped over and was empty, when he thought about who would have been able to get their hands on his supplies. He realized that it was highly improbable that a small bird could have accomplished such a feat at that moment, it was quite clear that Yakov. Pavlovich's provisions were most likely being utilized by another individual. One day, he came upon a pretty large robber who was perched on a branch of a tree, it appeared that this individual was the person responsible for the shoplifting of the elderly man's provisions, Yakov Pavlovich made the decision to accommodate this extremely intelligent and huge raven by establishing a separate feeder that contained larger leftovers in order to satisfy its demand. Their friendship steadily developed as the raven became more confident, at first, it approached the balcony with caution, looking for any indications that Yakov Pavlovich was present, after a while, it helped itself to a bit of food and then retreated, after some time had passed, the raven began to make more frequent visits, even going so far as to perch on the balcony and tap its beak on the ledge to signal its approach, Yakov Pavlovich, who was able to read the cues that his bird companion was giving him made sure that there was always food available, nevertheless, their schedule was thrown off when Yakov Pavlovich became unwell, which prevented him from being able to tend to the balcony, it was impossible for Yakov Pavlovich to keep up with their regular feeding schedule, despite the fact that his daughter helped him with the provisioning and medication. After Yakov Pavlovich had recovered from his illness, he eventually became aware of the raven's absence and made the decision to move to a tranquil hideaway in the countryside close to the city during the warmer months, while he was participating in his daily routines at the country estate, he was taken aback when he heard a tapping and croaking sound that was familiar to him. As soon as Yakov Pavlovich stepped onto the porch, he was greeted by the sight of the raven perched close, it was most likely the same bird that had visited his balcony in the past. The fact that the raven had sent him a small package, which strengthened their connection, came as a complete surprise to him, unwrapping the package with great care, Yakov. Pavlovich was struck speechless and filled with a mixture of happiness and remorse as he took in the contents of the package. As soon as he laid sight on the exquisite stone that was concealed there, tears began to fill up in his eyes, it was obvious that the stone came with a significant amount of worth, possibly even a fortune, Yakov Pavlovich, who was overcome with emotion, came to the realization that the raven had sent this gift to him as a sign of appreciation for the care and sustenance that he had provided. At the same time that Yakov Pavlovich was filled with happiness at the prospect of acquiring such an unanticipated prize, he was also overcome with a feeling of sadness, inadvertently becoming a participant in a criminal act, he was unable to shake the nagging impression that the stone had been taken without his knowledge because he was a man of integrity and honesty, it was difficult for him to accept a gift that had the potential to cause him problems, he was adamant about his choice. And he was aware that he had to give up the stone in an effort to locate the person who was legally entitled. To possess the jewels, Yakov Pavlovich set off on a voyage to the city, 
There were no leads on the missing stone that he discovered despite his efforts, which included searching the streets and speaking with acquaintances who worked in jewelry stores, writing a letter in which he detailed the circumstances and offered to return the stone to Vlad, the owner, he speculated that it might belong to a major collector or museum. He also offered to return the stone to Vlad in the letter that he sent to the primary police department, Yakov Pavlovich expressed his hope that they would be able to aid him in discovering the real owner, a few days later, he received a message that confirmed his suspicions, the stone had, in fact, been stolen from a museum, which caused a considerable controversy, having expressed their gratitude for Yakov Pavlovich's honesty. The museum extended their thanks to him and gave him a reward, nevertheless, he graciously declined the gift, the real prize for him was the Realization that he had acted in a manner that was appropriate. Yakov Pavlovich continued to care for and feed the raven after he returned the stone to the museum, their connection was enhanced by a shared sense of friendship and gratitude towards one another, and they were aware that they were connected by something that was truly exceptional, that's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story, Tatyana was born and raised in our rural community, yet. Not long after she finished her education, she was eager to see the thriving urban environment. As she grew older, she found that her hometown was calling her more regularly, despite the fact that she originally only visited her elderly parents on a sporadic basis, Tatyana's love adventures in the city had not been successful, and as a result, she does not have a significant other, despite the fact that she is still a young and gorgeous lady, by taking advantage of her vacation. She went back to the hamlet where she was born and stayed with her mother for more than 14 days, her father had passed away a number of years earlier, and her mother, who was adamant about her devotion to the rural way of life, refused to entertain any idea of moving to the city with her daughter Tatyana did not pursue the issue since she was aware that her mother would experience a sense of confinement in a city flat due to the fact that she was accustomed to living in the countryside, my roots tie me here. She insisted firmly it was common practice in the hamlet for Tatyana to assist her mother with the chores that were associated with the household. When Tatyana was finally able to get some time to herself, she made the decision to spend some time in nature by herself. She went into the adjacent woodland with a basket and a rucksack full of provisions in her possession with the broad area of the Primorsky region being encircled by a lush canopy. The region was fortunate enough to have a large number of forests with abundant vegetation, one may find a plentiful supply of nutrition and therapeutic herbs in this location. In addition to the excitement of searching for treasures that were concealed inside the depths of the forest, the activity of mushroom hunting, which Tatyana had enjoyed doing since she was a child, was one that she was very good at, in spite of the fact that she lived in the city, she longed for the peace and quiet of the woods, where she could be alone with the extensive natural landscape when she was in the woods. She would imagine the elusive fungi playing a game of cat and mouse with her. And she would imagine that they were trying to tease her from their hiding places, on the other hand, once she had them in her possession, she would easily pick them up and put them to her basket, with the bounty she had, she was able to prepare a wide range of delectable dishes, such as savory fried mushrooms with sour cream and dried mushrooms for soup, the aroma of which was guaranteed to fire the appetite of everyone who tried it, when it comes to complementing the warmth of the furnace on. Long winter evenings, there is nothing quite like salted mushrooms coming into play, the addition to the table is something that Tatyana holds in high regard, and she couldn't agree more. During the course of her exploration of the forest, she came across juvenile mushrooms, which gradually rekindled her ability to recognize these crafty organisms, her basket became fuller with each step but all of a sudden, the forest appeared to be devoid of mushrooms, it was as if the mushrooms had become aware of a potential danger and fled into hiding, without being deterred, Tatyana continued her journey deeper into the thicket of the taiga, the landscape bringing back memories of her father's adventures with her when she was a youngster, it appeared as though the mushrooms were leading her further away from her house, as they emerged from beneath the moss-covered foliage. She eventually found that her basket was stuffed to the full with a magnificent harvest, yet, as she looked around, she became aware that she was confused. In spite of the fact that she could recall where she had begun, the environment seemed foreign to her as Tatyana fought the impulse to panic, she reasoned that going back over her previous actions could cause her to make a mistake, rather than that, she surveyed the landscape in search of a vantage point, 
after spotting a neighboring hill that was topped with a few patches of woodland. She made up her mind to climb it in order to get a better perspective, Tatyana rose while adjusting her grasp. On the basket, her legs, which were already tired, were fueled by adrenaline, after reaching the peak, she took a panoramic view of her surroundings and looked for a well-known landmark that would lead her back to the settlement. As Tanya approached the edge of a steep formation, she noticed that the rock had began to collapse over the course of time, resulting in the construction of what appeared to be a rocky walkway at the base of the structure, it was necessary for her to circumnavigate this rugged wall in order to ascend, Tatyana proceeded along the rocky ridges with extreme caution, hopping from one stone to the next, she kept her attention fixated on her footing in order to prevent herself from tripping over the harsh terrain, her eyes shot up in a startled manner, and a shiver rushed down her spine without warning, there was a large Amur tiger that was taking the same rough road as she was, but it was going in the opposite way, it was standing squarely in her path during the few heart-stopping moments that she was frozen in place, Tatyana felt fear hold her like cold tendrils may grip her, the tiger, too, appeared to be taken aback by the unanticipated encounter, it observed the woman with amber eyes that were asking questions, evaluating her for any potential danger she may pose, Tatyana, despite her fear, observed that the tiger did not exhibit any aggressive behavior, she slowly retreated a few feet and spoke softly in an effort to calm the majestic beast, while she was keeping a watchful eye on the animal. She gently grabbed her backpack of provisions and laid them out on the ground as a gift to the tiger, she did this while keeping a keen glance on the animal, the tiger's interest was sparked by the aroma of food, which enabled Tatyana to quickly retreat while maintaining her focus on the tiger's movements during the entire maneuver, it was her hope that she would be able to avoid the striped predator, so she ran as far as she could, her pulse hammering with each step, Tatyana finally got a moment. Of relief after nearly half an hour of furious running through the taiga, she collapsed on a fallen tree to collect her breath, and she had her basket by her side, in spite of the fact that the forest provided protection, the memory of the meeting continued to endure, serving as a constant reminder of the unpredictability of the wild as the temperature of the evening air continued to drop. Tanya took off her handkerchief in order to clean her face, on the other hand, when she opened her eyes. She was taken aback to discover that the tiger was standing only a few meters away from her, staring at her with fixed attention, what more do you want from me, Tanya yelled out, experiencing a mixture of terror and resignation inside of her, there is nothing else that I can provide, you have ingested everything there is, even though she was nervous, she couldn't help but observe the tiger's obviously welcoming demeanor as it gracefully glided in front of her, almost as if it were trying to show. Off its beauty and strength, Tanya appealed with a voice that was tinged with desperation, please, let me go, she said, the tiger reacted with a low roar, using its playful personality to lessen the imposing presence it had been displaying, Tanya, who was perplexed by the tiger's actions, had the impression that it was attempting to convey something to her, every time it made an attempt to leave, it would look back at her, almost as if it were encouraging her to come along with it, Tanya, who had the impression that she was being enchanted. Gently stood up while holding her basket in her hands, she followed the tiger as it led her into the dense vegetation of the taiga, Tanya was being watched by the predator, who walked with intent and occasionally checked on her progress, despite the fact that she was in complete disbelief, she obeyed their request and accompanied them on their peculiar adventure, which lasted for close to an hour. Tanya had a sudden epiphany as she started to know their surroundings, this realization came to her. Instantly, it was the same path that she had traveled in the past, tears began to form in her eyes as she was overcome with feelings of appreciation, she was now able to comprehend the message that the gorgeous predator had been attempting to impart. During that very instant, she experienced a tremendous sense of gratitude for the wild beast for assisting her in escaping the forest setting, not only among people, but also among animals, it was a demonstration of the universal knowledge of compassion that exists.